Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and I have a rather long video <laughs> with an interactive card which if you have followed me for any length of time you know I do not make interactive cards very often. I don't know, it's just I overthink them I think is my problem and <laughs> I definitely did with this one but it, and it was so worth it. It was so cute. I had so much fun. So let's let's get into it. I'm starting with the My Favorite Things Friends with Fins stamp set by Birdie Brown and I just I fell in love with this last month when it was released and I've had it sitting here and I had like this whole card like planned out in my head. So I'm finally forced myself. I was like, I need to do this. So I am stamping the images from the set onto Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And I'm stamping them with uh, Simon's Stamp Intense Black Ink, which is Cobalt friendly. Stamping these a few times because they are brand new stamps. And a lot of times they will need a little bit of extra love. Got to stamp them more than once. Um, to get, you know, the crisp inches. And after they've been, you know, stamped and used and cleaned a few times, they stamp so much better. Also, when you're stamping multiple images, sometimes I'm the worst for pressing down and getting, you know, a clean image, hence me using a stamp platform. So after I've got everything stamped, I am coloring everything in with Copic markers. And I also went outside of the box a little bit with a couple of the color combos I did. Um, I started with this shark because he is the star of the show. <laughs> I've, I've said this in other videos. I, I love shark stamps, like cutesy ones and everything. I just, there's something, but I think it's adorable. I'm ter the thought, even though I live in the middle of the country, completely landlocked, and I've been to the ocean like twice in my entire life, I am terrified of sharks. But shark stamps crack me up. I think they're the best. So I am coloring him with neutral grays. And I did my darkest to lightest, which I always do. And I, But this time I actually went back and really intensified like the parts of his body because I wanted them darker. So I went back and started adding more of that N4 and the N6 to really kind of deepen it up so that his like body and back was darker than like his undersides, I guess was what you're going to call it. So added all of that um, in with a second layer just to intensify and use more of the N4 and the N6. And then for his little mouth, I'm using R24, R22, and R20, just to give it that little bit of color. And then I actually go in and just dab the teeniest little bit of BG, like quadruple zero onto his teeth. It's, I don't even know if that's really necessary. I don't think it does anything, but it's just habit. It makes white look more white technically. And then after I'd done that, I went back in with, this is my zero color splendor. I do this. I've shown this a lot. It's a fun way to add like texture because you can also do long, you can do any like pattern you want, but I like to do like a dotting texture and it just pushes the color away and it gives it that fun, you know, modeled sort of look. So I did that to my little sharky. And then for the dolphins, I started with B00. And I was doing it, I was like, well, dolphins are technically more gray. So I went back in with the N1 and just layered that right on top, just stuck it on there. And then I'm just going to start blending these together with the other colors. So I'm using like B triple zero and then B quadruple zero. And then I end up adding like a little bit of N zero just to get that kind of like very light blue gray sort of a look. So go in, color all them. And then for the little tummies, I was just using like a little bit of that N1 and the N zero just to finish them off. So after I do those little guys, I'm going to go on to my little orca here. And for him, because technically, you know, they're more like black and white, I'm using cool grays for this. So starting with C8 and then working my way, you know, down to the lightest. So this is just my kind of typical go-to. I find to like, if I want something to look like, I guess I would call it like black, um, I like to use cool grays for this. Whereas if I want things to have a little bit more warmth to them, like on the shark, I use the neutral grays. Um, there are other ones in the Copic lineup. Like there's the warm grays. Those are another one. Those are a lot warmer. They're almost like along the lines of like a brown gray. And then there's the toner grays, which I actually don't own. I could go into like random. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> use the cool grays for my little orca dude. And then um, they just use the lightest along with the zero color of blender for like the white areas. And then after I'd done that, I decided to go back onto those dolphins and just use, use that N1 again. And I just, again, dotting motion. Like it doesn't always have to be the colorless blender you use. It could be any, any color. It doesn't matter. 
So I just went in with that and again, just kind of dotted it all along the little dolphins. Just again, it adds like just a little bit of like texture to it. So I did all that. And then for my whale, I am starting with really dark, dark blues, like the darkest blues. This is B99 I'm starting with here. So my absolute darkest blue. And then I'm going to go in with B97 and B95. And I was having a few little issues. I think it was with my B95. Um, it was being a little bit streaky and kind of annoying me. But that marker is also, I'm not even joking, like 12 years old. So it's old. And while Copic markers will obviously last a incredibly long amount of time, like, yeah, uh, my original little um, Chow markers I've had since I first got them. And that was well, well over a decade ago, more like 12, 13 years ago. I don't even remember. Um, and they'll last, but if it's a if they if you don't use them very often and they just sit for years and years and years and years, they can start to kind of get almost like gummy in the tips. So that's what I think is kind of happening this one because these are cut like the really dark blues like this. I don't use this often, um, but slowly you can either get new tips for them and refill them, which is not too um, cost prohibitive, or in my case, I've been slowly just replacing my chows with the sketch version just because I prefer the sketch version. I have old videos on my channel, really, really old ones, um, comparing the Copic, different styles, all the same ink, all the same colors, just different marker sizes. And yeah, that's another random little whatever. <laughs> and with that whale, I did end up adding some of the neutral grays like I had listed with that one too, just to kind of gray down the blue a little bit because, you know, he's a whale. So after I did all those, um, the little narwhal, I did the same color combo as the shark. That's why I didn't bother showing him, but I used the exact same like neutral gray markers. And then I did the little splashes, which I'd stamped multiples of. And then after I was done all my coloring, I went in with my Jelly Roll 10 white gel pen. This is definitely my favorite white gel pen. Um, I have it linked always when I use it. And went in and just added, you know, little highlights and little dots and whatnot. Um, I don't really follow, I always get asked that if I'll, you know, show how I do it. Well, that I'm showing it right now. Um, I just add it where I think it's going to look the nicest. I don't follow like any specific rules. I've been trying to tell people more like that. There, it, like there's technically rules, you know, like light sources and blah, blah, blah. And yet at the same time, don't. Honestly, I struck it that that definitely derailed me a lot when I was struggling with coloring and, you know, trying to improve and everything else. I just like shadows and light and where it's supposed to be and what's best really held me back a lot. And now I just I ignore it. I just do what I think is going to look the nicest and try not to overthink it. So after I've done all my coloring, all my little highlights, I die cut all of them with the coordinating dynamic set. And now I'm going to get into the actual card, like, which is interactive and all that fun stuff. So I cut down some Nina Classic Crest 110 pound cardstock now, because I like that weight for like card bases. And I cut down my first piece, like my actual card base is four and a quarter by eight and a half. And then the second piece, I just cut slightly narrower because I trimmed it down with the wafer die, the wave edge wafer die from the pop up wiper card components dynamics. So I have my card base, which is that big piece, and then the wave piece, which is also eight and a half inches long. And then it can be kind of whatever width within reason. You want it to be a little higher. I actually cut mine down. I probably should have made it a little bit taller, um, which you'll see why a little later in the video when I'm actually like making the wiper card part, but this still worked. So for this, this is obviously the water. And I'm going to use these Hero Hues reactive inks that I just showed in that monster haul video that I just did. Um, this is my very first time using them. <laughs> I was again overthinking and I was like, I need to do a special dedicated video. And I was like, just use them. Take the lids off. Use them. So that's what I did. And I will say this is like, this is Nina cardstock, which is great for Copic marking. I don't, or Copic coloring. Oy. I don't like this cardstock for ink blending. I find it's actually a lot more difficult um, to blend on because that's not what it's, you know, meant for in my opinion, but it still works. Um, I did try a sponge, like a blending sponge first and I really didn't like that. So I'm just using my picket fence life-changing blender brushes. 
and that I liked and I'm not working towards a perfectly smooth blend here you can see like it doesn't look smooth that isn't the ink that is me I actually was liking how that was looking because you're thinking like the movement of water and waves and all this stuff so in my head I was like don't go perfect don't make it a smooth blend like leave those areas and those marks it actually kind of looks really cool it wasn't my original plan but as I was seeing this before I would go back in normally and like smooth it out and add more ink I was like no no I like I like how this looks so I used splash ink on the top perfect and then blue Hawaii on the bottom there there's just the darker blue to kind of blend and I'm working on my waffle flower water media mat this is I need to remember to do this more often when I'm ink blending because it is awesome for ink blending because of the silicone it like holds your cardstock in place like you don't need to tape it down you barely need to hold it it just it all not quite suctions it just holds it so anyway I all I've been raving about this mat since it came out I love it so I also used the sea salt reactive ink that's the white ink lots of you know a ton of people asking because I was kind of thrown back by it too it is really good for lightening the ink blending you do that's what I did along the top it also is awesome for splatter which I'll show again here in a second as well um, you can also use it if you take just color cardstock and blend the white in the middle. You get, you know, a lighter area, which kind of creates, you know, a natural highlight focal point. So, so many ideas. But anyway, cleaned off my brushes just by rubbing them on a microfiber cloth. I rarely, if ever, wash these brushes. I don't need to. I find just rubbing them until all the ink comes off on my microfiber cloth. I can go on to the next ink, the next color, the next whatever. So cleaned off my brushes, set those aside. I smushed the sea salt reactive ink pad onto an acrylic block, added a little bit of water and then grabbed a paintbrush and I'm going to splatter this. And for a, it is way more white than you would expect. I don't know, like normally, like I would never use like a white pigment ink to do splatter because I just don't like the results. And yet this gives really good results. I don't know, I just, I was really happy with it. So I splattered that onto this little water background, cleaned up my mess, let that dry. And then I'm stamping these little, little like silhouette fish images from that same Friends with Fins set. I'm just stamping it with the Blue Hawaii Reactive Ink. I will say, I don't think these, and I don't think these inks were intended. I don't think they're the greatest for stamping, just the type of ink they are. Um, I think they'd be good stamping if you're using a stamp platform or a Misty, like so you're stamping multiple times. I think they'll be okay for stamping sentiments, but like solid images, you don't get like a really solid coverage. But I got these more for doing like the techniques. That's was the whole sort of point. And I think that's what these inks are meant for. Like they're meant for blending and techniques and all that fun stuff. So I used the um, same splash ink to do my background on the card base. And I'm using my favorite things little, this is the mini cloud edges stencil. I've super sped this up. <laughs> I wish I could like blend this fast some days, but I super sped this up and I'm just, cause I'm just doing very simple, like pulling the color off of the stencil onto the card. And I'm just layering, like layering and layering and layering and moving that stencil all over the place to create this fun cloudy sky. And just moving that stencil around until I've completely filled in like almost this entire card base. So then once that's completely done, now is where I start doing the elements to make this an interactive card. So for the card base, I scored it at five and a half inches. And then I'm scoring again at seven inches. I have to flip this around because my little score buddy's not long enough. So I'm scoring it one and a half inches in. But I'm basically scoring it at five and a half and then seven inches or... You could also say one and a half and three inches from the right. So you can see, there's my scores. So that when those are folded in, that is a standard A2 card size. Now for the water piece, I'm doing the exact same measurements just from the left. So scoring it at one and a half inches and at three inches. And I'm just flipping it around and scoring it even more just to like really emphasize this because obviously these folds are gonna go back and forth, back and forth. So I really want these folds crisp and to work. So that's it. That's all the scoring you need to do. And with this type of a card and this little like mechanism, you can do portrait cards. You can do smaller elements. Like you can kind of work with it to make it work and like adjust different measurements. I just kept it like simple because again, I don't do interactive and my brain doesn't work this way. Um, I did add a bit of ink to the, to this one little like kind of center area on the back just because you see it when you fold it in there so I didn't want that white edge so again depending on what you're doing what kind of cardstock whatever so I did all that 
And now this little element that comes in the pop-up wiper card components. I die cut this from um, the same 110 pound cardstock. I use my pencil to mark that little arrow. It, it's, uh, it's embossed in so you can see it, but I use my pencil so you can see it in the video. That's the side where you're going to attach your character, your whatever it is you want to pop up. So I put this pencil mark on there and also it helps remind me to know what I'm doing because this actually took me a couple tries because I, my brain just, it took me a while for my brain to wrap around. And once I did it, it was like, oh. <laughs> So I also have this little tiny just strip of um, acetate. This is actually just a piece of packaging that I cut down. You can use a piece of cardstock, something just, just a narrow little strip of something. It just depends on what you're doing. I just use this little piece of acetate and it's a little heavier weight because I cut it from packaging. And I am going to, um, I put adhesive on the inside of the flap where the arrow is because the arrow is there to, that's where your image is going to go. So I fold it, well, that over after adding score tape and I have that piece of acetate and that's what I'm going to connect my character. But I'm not connecting the character yet because I've after, because again, this was not my first, my first attempt. This was my second and because of just me not figuring it out in the beginning. So I add adhesive to this other little flap here on the corner and then you just line that up with the first score line uh, that from the right. So I have this flipped over and you can just kind of see how this is starting to come together. So I've adhered that little flap and this is where I had to kind of do some adjustments. So I would close it so I could see where everything is going to sit. And then I end up moving that little acetate piece so that it comes down straight and doesn't stick out because otherwise it would stick out on the bottom of the card. So I folded it shut there. I can see where everything's going to sit. And now I know I needed to move my little acetate piece so much better. So once I got that, I'm going to do the exact same thing now with my little shark because he's the one, you know, he's the star of the show. So I just add a tiny little bit more of that score tape to the acetate piece. And then I'm just kind of like closing this and adhering him to my little shark. And I'm still going to adjust this because I just in my head the way I want him to show up behind this wave. So when I did it the first time, I didn't like how he's like, even though there, there's videos proving like sharks will jump right out of the water. But I want him to be more of a happy shark. He's just peeking up. He's not like out here to kill everybody. <laughs> so I adjust him a little bit so that he kind of just more peeks out like that instead of fully like, you know, like getting some serious air. So once I was happy with how he was um, popping out there and see when he folds down, he doesn't go past the bottom of the card. That's why I was fiddling with that piece of acetate, making sure. And then once that part, I would literally have that whole like Tom Hanks castaway I have made fire moment. I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even exaggerating. Like I was going around the house showing the kids, showing Chris, like, look what I did. <laughs> anyway, I was proud of myself. So once that element was done, that was the most difficult part of this. But again, once you do it once... It just, everything else, like the rest of this card just came together. Like, and now that I've done it once, it's like, okay, I get it now. I get how this works. I could do this again and it would take me a fraction of the time. So I hope my video explained it enough because that was my difficulty. It's just, I always need somebody to explain it to me. So I hope the video helps anyone else who got these dies or wants to do a card like this. Um, Cause yeah, it's really fun once you figure it out. So I adhered all the rest of my little characters. I used one of those little wave die in the friends with fins coordinating dies. And I die cut that from the wave piece just to cut that little line to tuck my narwhal in. And then the remaining characters and a sentiment I put on the back of the card because there's nowhere with a card like this, there's nowhere to write to your recipient. So you'd write it on the back. So I, this is how I would finish the inside of my card. I just put it on the back. So I added the little characters, a sentiment, stamped a little fishies again stuck that on there so that of course there's something on the back of it too and then for the sentiment on the front I end up actually cutting it down with scissors I don't have a problem doing this I know some people just like it just hurts you know but once you do it enough it doesn't it's fine so I cut this sentiment down because I wanted it to hide behind when the cards closed I wanted to kind of hide behind those flaps so that's what I did and then I'm stamping it with um I was using VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink for that and then the last remaining thing you need to remember with these cards is you only put adhesive on the ends. So I'm putting adhesive on the far left part up to the score line of the wave piece and then putting adhesive on the far right part and again not going past that first score line. 
So that's the only place you put adhesive. You don't put it anywhere else. So I used again my score tape for this because it's super, super strong and nothing's going to go anywhere and it'll handle this, you know, being moved around and all that stuff. So peeled off just the adhesive on the far right first, adhered that into place, just lining those up. And then on the left, I'm just going to fold that over, peel off the backing, and then again, line that up, make sure everything's straight before pressing this down. And then once I've got this pressed down, this card is complete and super cute. And when it's folded up, when the shark is tucked down, it's folded up, this is A2 size. So it'll fit in a standard envelope, no problem. It's four and a quarter by five and a half, so I can pop it in an envelope. And then the recipient will pull it out and it'll, you know, pull it out. And the little shark pops up and it's just the cutest thing in the world, in my opinion. I love it. This was so fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Apologies if you hear like a whirring sound. My laptop is like melting with links of videos and editing like this. <laughs> but yeah, as always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to everything. If you are interested in any of it, you can check it out below. Um, using my links means I generate a little bit of affiliate income, which keeps this YouTube channel running. Um, thank you guys tons, and I will see you all very, very soon in the next video. Bye.